Namaste to all the people in the woodworking community in India and worldwide. Thank you so much for joining me on yet another episode of Stories of Woodworkers from India. So you know that, you know, we always have been living this dual life where we are doing our full-time jobs on one side and we have our passion for woodworking, which keeps us pulling back to the workshop space and the maker space where we can create something of more greater value. And you should know that there are going to be innumerable amount of people who are living this duality right now. This person whom I'm going to introduce right now is just the first person of the list. Thank you so much for being here, Mr. Kingshuk Chakravarti. Kingshuk, I'm really, really delighted that you're here with me. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, Namaskar, Namaste, hello. So, yeah, it, uh, I'm glad that I'm here too. Yeah. So, yeah, keep your question. Yeah, Kingshuk. Yeah, uh, let's let's start. Uh, tell tell us something about yourself. Uh, uh, what have you been doing all these years? And uh, I know your the life that you're living, the dual life that you're living. Uh, and tell us something about that and how you got into woodworking, when you got into woodworking, and etc. Uh, etc. Et all over to you. Yeah, okay. all over to you. Okay. Okay. Anything interest me? <laughs> so I started yeah, by profession. Um, I work. And I have been doing that for the last 15 years and will continue to do so as an efficient course. And uh, the project I am doing, it's, a, it's I mean, in general, I think it's kind of demanding in terms of and office is also very, not very near to my place. About 20 minutes to the place, one way. So it takes quite some time. I don't have any personal cars, so it takes coming time is nearly three hours. So. Monday to Friday, I'm being popular. So that's all about uh, professional life. I have my family, I have my wife and two kids. One is uh, adopted, the bigger one, so non-human species. And the second is my daughter. <laughs> so both are my kids and uh, equally lovable. And that's about my family, primarily. I, I lost my uh, parents. And, uh, Last time at 2014, my daughter had been dead. She has came here at Kolkata. This is my native place and it's from most of my childhood. As far as uh, woodworking is concerned, I am not, I, I mean, there are a few people still, the initial state of life, something like that. It never, it's something like gold from a blue. I was always inclined to doing something hands like picking a screw with the wall, something like that. And that's true, not not uh, earlier than five to six years. But nothing sort of woodworking. In my engineering course also, like I uh, I'm having a stream called that exact engineering. But uh, there are uh, guys from mechanical stream who used to have a, a, a part of their curriculum called uh, workshop woodworking. I was also having like the first year was common, but I bumped that class. You know? Like our seniors, they told like the woodworking kind of day, which is dangerous. Your workpiece might get broken if you are not uh, very careful too. So there were two parts. One is uh, smithy, you know, iron metal. So I attended that class. I touched first time the file, how to shape. That's it. All about like, workshop kind of thing. Never came to my mind. So, you know, like in every house, they used to build something called a kitchen cabinet. Something. That, that's supposed to be costly. I mean, when, a, when our family, like any, any family wants to, you know, decorate their homes and something like that. Even like my wife also told, let's, let's have something called a kitchen cabinet. Stuff. So, in the year 2014, like I was inquiring about kitchen cabinet. People take home from renowned, uh, you know, makers and all, they quoted something exorbitant. In the meantime, I started fixing the shelves by buying a drill machine and all. And uh, all of a sudden, something came to my mind that can't I cut a plywood and fix some screws and stuff? I started Google. What are the tools for cutting plywood and all? Like something called a circular soil. There are many other things. There. And I, I stumbled upon uh, a website, a blog of material management. So, where he described that we can actually 
to uh, we can actually break many things i thought will it be very difficult so that's the that's the thing like it was started it was just a question to me like whether i can do it i thought probably i can i bought a circular saw it was late 2015 it's it's uh, it's november if i'm not wrong it's november 2015 when all this started i bought a circular saw i bought a regular saw i bought a hex and i bought a block plane and i started doing something i haven't had plywood during that time so whatever was there uh, my house is actually it's not a flat it's a house and we have had uh, old doors and all doors made out of wood like our house is more than 35 years old some of the doors were not used we removed those doors that were in stone so i started cutting uh, you know the doors with a circular saw and uh, there were frames made out of old shawl one of the hardest of the woods and i remember like there could have been many danger type of accidents could have been there but i had my study table you know where i used to study i bought some c clamps i fixed those beams of you know almost two and a half by four uh, shallot and started cutting that thick beam with circular saw and there were key bits and uh, you know all the night and during my during that time my wife was pregnant and uh, she was there in the, in the room beside me and in the night i am i am running the circular saw and something like that and it's just for you know cutting and shaping and technically what we call the reclaiming the wood by that the process starts so that's that's all about starting starting yeah so it has so it started from smithing uh, in the beginning you were interested in smithing and no, then no not not quite so you know i am kind of person okay. who is to observe many things i mean uh, let's say let, let me give an example i was very much fond of photography You know, once upon a time, I used to roam around the streets taking photos. It's mm. sort of photo journalism, and uh, I have seen people are making keys. You know, keys they carry a box and make duplicate keys. What they carry? A few set of files and saw and something like that out of metal shaped uh, things. I used yeah. to, I mean, observe. I mean, not 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 out of interest that I'm going to make something, but I used to observe that how it, that that is done and. those things probably got uh, imprinted in me mm-hmm. so that when i was about to make that uh, you know knife inches out of brass it never mm-hmm. occurred to me that it is not doable <laughs> you know some people Absolutely. like uh, i i know some people like uh, they even put the question a small piece how did you make the shape out of something mm-hmm. so probably you know that mentality of asking that very question that a small piece how can you make the round shape it's an mm. amazing thing mm. probably that comes from the factory standpoint that you have some machine and you beat some uh, metal piece and that shape will come out automatically and mm. i never used to believe in that philosophy i'm a uh. i'm a kind of man who thinks that you can shape it using the files you know i've done that it's mm. already there in me so when that making that thing was came into question it was never a problem for me to how to shape it it's it's put in a vice and shape it in five so that was yeah speaking for speedy part of it but when the working thing uh, i was cutting those doors and all i then i reclaim those and i don't didn't know what, how, what to do with that then i found something that probably i need to build a wall bridge in order to place those things and box then i started you know browsing to like what are the various ways to make the wall bridge and so on so forth and uh, it was then then i i i i discovered there are many things called bats <laughs> there is something called regular saw and there are also two two kinds of you know that kits and something like that so i kept on studying those things over internet and all i have never uh, i was not uh, kind of fortunate enough to see any woodworker working in front of me uh, i mean in front of my eyes mm. uh, and in kolkata like uh, 
people get uh, more credit while you know doing doing action while thinking something you know <laughs> people call them intellect but walking with hand you are not regarded that 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 kind of <laughs> anyway that's a okay. different context okay. altogether but uh, okay. yes <laughs> that is the thing i mean so yeah. uh, when you started browsing uh, about the work so the first thing you stumbled upon was uh, mr banerjee's uh, blog right, right. Uh, that that's what you started with okay so there was no yeah, I mean, reading as a carpentry something where you okay. where you went where you visited a mill or where you visited a workshop and then you got from there uh, no. so it oh okay so the only thing is like uh, my i mean it's probably something <clears throat> Uh, of my nature that I am kind of keen observer, you know, whatever happens yeah. around me, if that thing interests me, I, I keep keep an open eye and observation and things like that, and that gave gave me some feedback, but not directly doing the work. But yes, I was uh, stumbled upon uh, Paul Seller's video, and uh, where he demonstrated making three joints. One is mortise and jetum. Second one is uh, Dado, third is Dafne. So Dafne, I thought I will probably never going to make it. It's a very, okay. you know, high-five thing to do. High-five. And uh, yes, high-five thing to do. So the, and yes, in between I joined the group of, uh, in Facebook. There was one group, Indian Woodworkers or India DIA Woodworkers, something like that. Uh, it was, uh, here I got, Got introduction with many, you know, renowned woodworkers uh, in our country, and there were many helpful persons who, I mean, without any hesitation, you know, help to always help a uh, budding woodworker like us. So, yes, Mr. Abid Ali is there. I mean, he's very generous. And whenever I used to have any questions, he is always generous to provide the. Uh, so I remember the very first thing when I was studying, he asked me to build something called a bench hook. So he told me, you start with the bench hook, that will give you a fair idea about, uh, you know, the solid wood as well as the plywood. Build a, build a bench hook. Then he asked me to build a shooting hook. So these are the first two things I built out of, you know, ply and wood. So the bench hook was the first thing. And, uh, and it was always a, you know, you know making something with, with joy. So I posted, sorry, posted that thing in the Facebook and everyone put it, yeah, it's good and it can be done this way. It's good in this way. Something like that. I, I, I feel delighted. I mean, always, you know, keep something out of that. Then I realized something like, I was seeing the pictures, you know, the, the, there was an auto, uh, which photo, like, like he was standing there. So Abid has a workshop. I never visited that, but I saw the picture. No, so the way he kept the tools in 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 wall in a, in a, in a, in a custom made shelf and something like that. And yes, obviously I'm a kind of impulsive guy, right? so I started ordering things in Amazon. Okay, then what are the tools? Woodworking tools you need and something like that. And I started ordering. So by by collection. Drew starting from that uh, saw and uh, circular saw and saw block plane to something else. I don't so some 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 persons it's always there, no, in the forum. Uh, I mean, in any in, in side, that router is the most versatile tool of woodworking. So even I don't know how to how what to do with the router. I bought a router. <laughs> so I bought a router. I bought a sander. Okay, so sander. I mean, I was searching, like, uh, my search criteria was, uh, what are the useful tools? And then also, I, I, I was closely following in doing my blog, and there he, he talked a very good thing about the show up there. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I bought, uh, I ordered two, three show up things during that time. So by, by April, April uh, 2016, and my wife was in advanced stage of pregnancy. 
And I, I used to roam around, you know, the, the street of Kolkata, and I have a knack of, you know, finding things. I, 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 it's a kind of treasure, when you can say. So, during that time, I have a fair uh, definition of what is called a back song. And uh, I was searching for, you know, Scandi back song. Then I stumbled upon one store in Baramazar. He told, I have back song. That is old one. Few, few of the back shows, those who are old ones, not of scandal. I told, okay, let's visit. So then I came in contact with some vintage saw. So it was written, one one saw it was written Sheffield. So I heard, I recall that name Sheffield and street of making tools and such. And then this Amazon saw, it says that it is made out of uh, Swedish steel. I didn't know what is called Swedish steel during that time, but mm. it's a, a kind of intuition and something like that. And what that very saw, uh, leaving that uh, Sheffield, what that Swedish steel saw. <coughs> that was an old saw and a regular saw, hand saw. Then, like I thought, before uh, doing something out of plywood, let's start making something out of wood. Then, like there was one Almira kind of stuff, whose wood. Uh, I declaim. I have that standard and all this stuff, and I was always facing that issue, you know, clear out. I was using that uh, Shobha plane as it came out of the box and started using that. I saw that it, it was not cutting properly. I mean, the shavings are, I mean, getting teared off. I didn't have any absolutely no clue that how I have seen the carpenters, I mean, in the roadside, no? they are just. Uh, you know, <laughs> pulling that uh, that particular stuff and getting the yeah. shelling yeah. without not, not much tear out, without much uh, difficulty. But why I am facing the difficulty, I didn't have any clue. Mm. Then I, I came across the size and then the shape and sharp enough and something like that. Oh, what is me? So it's a big, big thing. I bought a, you know, that combination stone, that black. Carbonate and stone, you know, for that uh, rough and smooth water. And I started uh, sharpening my blade. It came out something, I don't know what, what was that. Then I run that on the piece of, you know, wood uh, where uh, that reclaimed do. And uh, I didn't have any idea, like everything I used to think this is Shegul. Because people call wood wood is Shegul or Shaguan, what we call tea. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it was a it, it was a yellowish brown in color and the texture was awesome. But I didn't have any clue what wood was that. And I was just taking that piece of wood in one of the you know hardware store to buy some screw or something. Then one <coughs> carpenter or something, he suddenly made a comment, this is Badam. Then he told it's badam, something like that. And uh, after that also, like probably some some fellow person, uh, probably the fish vendor or something, he have some idea. Casually told it's badam. I then thought probably it is badam. It is not tea. It is badam. Okay, fine. Then I started, you know, applying the brandy and something like that. And it, the, the, the texture was very smooth. You know, the, after. Shaving and fortunately, I found that in one direction it was I'm getting good shape, even with that uh, blunt blade, <laughs> and mm. in another direction I'm getting the tear out. Okay, mm. it was a frustrating experience. I don't have any clue why the tear out was coming from me, but in the reverse direction it started. Then I thought, what the sandal is for? Then the so I like that palm sandal. I have that square yeah. palm sandal uh, ah. of. Uh, that one, black and decker. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah I, I have seen that. Yeah, it is started smooth, although not not very fast. I mean, it is taking quite some time to you know feel those tear outs. But okay, my job is getting done. Okay. Mm. Then I and uh, in that uh, you know in the Facebook uh, there were people who were posting various stuff made. I I found one. One box made by Mr. Ravi Dali. It was made out of tape. And there was a joinery, you know, like it was a mitre. Two mitres are there. 
and there was a there was two doubles which were uh, at 45 degrees. At 45 okay. degrees, yeah. Yeah, it was holding those two pieces together. So, by seeing that box, I thought I can make something out of it. You know that uh, you put the uh, uh, devote, uh, I mean, the God's uh, picture or the idols, the worship kind of uh, platform. Yeah. You make yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 like a chotu mandir. Like a mandir. Ah, ha, ha. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. So I thought yeah. I can make something out of that. I can make uh -huh. something like it's a box. Which, so I make make that thing. I make that particular thing, and mm. then it came out somehow okay. And okay. Uh, I also have something like called uh, another another rule, which I didn't know what the rule was. Then also like uh, by here and there, I I took the sample and asked what this rule could be. Someone told me this is called bola. I don't know if Bola could be another wood, it's a tin piece, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there were doors which are made out of panels, you know, frame and panel construction. There were multiple yes. panels in traditional yes. folk. So that wood is from the panel, tin panel. Okay. Mm. And uh, it's a thin wood. I and I had during that time something called a pet shop. I was ordering things continuously, one by one, this, that, and something like that from Shoma Industries. I got the fret saw. And uh, I cut the shape of a different design. So what I did, I, I cut, cut in the paper, the origami kind of thing. I put put that on the strip of that bola wood. I marked the with pencil and put in the vise. I had during that time that vise that uh, that uh, it's not exactly a shash clamp, not 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 vise exactly. I mean clamp. It's not a shash clamp, but uh, people used to use them while making the doors. I put that put that thing clamped down, and I started cutting using fret saw. That also came out somehow good. I put that piece on top of that chinhasan, mm. oh. and then sorry, uh, so then something called uh, how to finish that particular thing. And I during that time got some idea about I mean, something called a shellac. You know, in the in the Kolkata market, there were many all vendors were shelling that stuff. You know, those things were, I have seen those things while getting the some envelope from, I mean, they used to put that, uh, what you call that, mohar seal. Yeah, it's, uh, the uh, wax tappa, tappa tappa. Oh, yeah, yeah, wax tappa, right. So those buttons yeah, yeah. Uh, were used to get sold there. I mean, ah. I guess, uh, streets of Kota. So somewhere I inquired and bought some button, button mm -hmm. thing called button shillet, they called mm -hmm. uh, then I got an idea that uh, okay, this can be dissolved in alcohol, spirit. So I bought that spirit. I dissolved it. I started applying, and uh, I always, I was always inclusive. You know, I, I always used to ask everyone, mm. even the person doesn't know. In my office also, you know, I, uh, <laughs> to my uh, juniors in my team, I used to ask, Sir, what is polish or polish? Mm, uh, polish mm. is very easy. I used we used to do in our engineering uh, projects and something like mm, that. Mm. You buy some that stuff, dissolve in alcohol. You get that stuff. It is also called gorjon tail in Bengali. Okay, mm. and you apply it with using rag. I started doing that particular thing. Mm -hmm. And also, like I was going through uh, uh, through the internet and various videos, I think you know that particular stuff. So initially, I used to do the shellac finish and all, and even today. But using that button. And uh, the very first time I applied that shellac in, in, in that Bada mode, no, that all grains popped up. That was a kind of, uh, I, I can't, can't uh, forget explain that experience. No one, no one can explain or forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, yeah the first time I, I, I discovered that there is something beyond those, you know, that beauty. Free. Mm. Wow. It's a natural thing, matter and something. And that interested me. Wow. I started doing that shellac. Like that particular piece was finished before the Vishnu of Puja. And uh, then go on. I mean, the next project was also a kind of big one. Someone suggested me you can be, be build a crib. A crib for your baby. Crib. Crib, crib. Okay, okay. Yeah. For your baby. 
Now, uh, I was for some obvious reason, I was not ready to you know, pick up that project uh, till my baby is born. So my child was born in the month of uh, June 2016 and the month of July. I started building, I mean, that crib. And yeah, meantime, for uh, making a workbench, I was uh, rigorously going through internet that what would be the solution and something like that. And uh, some people are kind of amazed that I picked up a workbench style called Robo. Robo or Robo. Robo, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the only reason I picked up that particular uh, workbench style is I thought, I know I always try to visualize when I'm making something. And while visualizing, I only saw that yes, it is the simplest one to me. Now, everyone will tell you it's not a simple workbench. Now, from my you perspective, Rubo, I, you thought Rubo is a simple workbench. Very no, good. No, I never. No, no, no. I, I, I didn't think that Rubo is a simple workbench. Uh huh. But from visualizing the standpoint, I see there are only twelve joints. Only twelve joints. Okay. There is a thick slab of top, mm -hmm. and there are four legs which are inserted inside the top. Okay. Just four four joineries to fix that with the legs, and there are stretches. Nothing complicated. Mm. The only complicated or the meticulous part is the joinery itself. You know, where the skill or whatever thing is needed. But from visualization standpoint, the component standpoint, it is having the least number of components. Okay, that is the reason I picked that. Okay. So I have my own 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 way of uh, you know thinking yeah. and thinking mm. which is feasible. So Rubo I thought feasible because it is not complicated. Mm. The joinery is very crucial. It can mm. actually destroy your work, uh, Rubo bench, non make it non function with the joiners. Mm. But I thought mm. I will put pay, pay attention and I will take time to make those joineries. But mm. overall, it is really difficult. But the uh, only uh, issue, you know, like I picked up wrong type of hooks. I, I picked up boards to make the top. Where you need to have those beams glued Beam. together. Yeah, uh, yeah, you need to have those glue together. Where I picked up boards, and mm. I picked up three different types of boards. One is a uh, tool, which someone told is not suitable for the top. Then, uh, in order to count, counter that, I picked up a uh, shawl, mm. and I then lastly picked up. I thought then one and a half inches uh, thick. It is making a three inches effective top. Then I thought, let's make it thicker. I picked up uh, that cardboard. And I was actually influenced by Chris Schwartz. Chris Schwartz uh, was the person. I didn't get that. Chris, uh, Christopher Schwartz. Ah, Chris Schwartz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Chris yeah. So I was very much influenced by Chris Schwartz and uh, while making that workbench stuff. And uh, he told that Robo is uh, very much doable. And uh, the, uh, I was following his book, and there he demonstrated how to do that, make that using handles. So I was having primarily handles except for routers and sanders. And uh, I thought, uh, actually, I was convinced by the writings of Krishna that it is doable. Okay, it is very much doable uh, using handles, and I was convinced. But uh, yes, people around me were not convinced. Now, so. There was one of my friends uh, stays in Kolkata and uh, you know, he told, you are picking Rubo, you don't have any idea about uh, making mortise and tenon. Uh, you know how critical that is. I mean, you should pick up a simpler workbench. Mm -hmm. Now, it's probably a, a kind of thing like, I'm never fascinated by doing simple. You're not fascinated <laughs> by doing what? I'm not fascinated by doing simple things. Simple things, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the difficulty, the challenges, it actually kicks me, you know. Uh -huh. I get the <laughs> nice. kick out of that. So, kick out of it, yeah, sure. But uh, mo moreover, like, I, I, I was very much convinced, like, I can do it, so I started. Uh -huh. nice. And before uh, starting my workbench, after my daughter was born, I picked up that, uh, that, that thing, crib. And I bought some two note, which here people call them mahogany. 
okay which is not mahagani per se but uh, but uh, yeah but i uh, like uh, and i didn't have any idea about what is called milling you know so i start milling milling the wood milling you know? milling yeah yeah okay yeah. Huh. so uh, to make it square and true okay. i didn't have any idea true true what i thought is i need to you know run the planes and plane in order to remove those knife marks which comes out of bad saw in the sawing there were knife marks so when you buy the boats yeah 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 and i was trying to make all the dimension based on whatever the woods I, i was having so i was started uh, applying that uh, that shoba plane which is kind of gun not sharp which is not sharp and that you know that tune is it's having interlocking grains so i am facing the tear outs then i thought there must be something wrong